Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omanus and today I will react to the top 10 secret weapon band members and this thumbnail is fucking insulting like how can you have a secret weapon band member whenever you have two members in your band you know being the fucking white stripe so they're referencing of course um, Mac White because Jack White is you know essentially the face of white stripes but Mac White is equally important but, but you know like no just no like why is Mac White a secret weapon band member? Well, she's like the most basic drummer out there. I don't get it at all. Um, can I, you know, can I think of artists that, you know, could make this list, you know, that have like a secret uh, weapon in, in their discography, arguably? Um, yeah, I can't really think about it. Yeah, I think that, uh, well, no, number one. I'm gonna spoil, spoil number one. The yeah yeah the, the Beatles are on there with Ringo Starr. Ringo is an amazing drummer. I love Ringo. He is great. Uh, I don't get Mac White. Like what? Why is she on there? I don't I don't get it personally, but sure. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, I don't want to admit this though, but uh, Izzy Stradlin from uh, Guns, of course. That um, you know Izzy is the best member, but still you know you know. It just kind of proves that you know Izzy was on those albums, and you know when Izzy left, the band just went to shit. So there you go. So that's gonna be on the list. Um, I mean, Izzy is like the only member I can stomach in that band. So there you go. So yeah, this, those are the those are some predictions for me, or those are some things that make the list because I've seen this video already. So there you go. I'm gonna adjust my camera in a bit. Uh, do uh, oh yeah, fucking John Endless, all amazing. Fuck you, Bonnards. Fuck Bonnards. These are the guys and gals who have no problem holding down the musical fort. Camera still gone off the the Pixies. The Who and the Pixies, two of two of Bonnards Bonnards' favorite bands. <laughs> amazing. I mean, I'm not even that big of a of a Pixies fan, but I mean. Like, they're not that bad to be honest, but they're just kind of like a shitty noise band to me, so there you go. Like, indie noise. Oh, Cliff Burton from Metallica, fuck yes. Oh my god, amazing. I love Cliff. Wow, this video actually has a lot of dislikes though, like 9200 likes compared to... 3300 dislikes, that, that, those are a lot of haters, damn. So kind of looking if the camera is all, but whatever, whatever. Um, I forgot, I forgot the fucking, oh yeah, Alex Lifesome, who was like, I mean, let's be honest here, he is the weakest member of Rush, like, he is a great guitarist, but, like, whenever you're in a band, you know, with Neil Peart and with, uh, Gary Lee, you're the weakest member of the band, you know, unless you think that Rush has bad vocals, which, you know, they don't have the best vocals. But Geddy Lee, like, you know, he's probably the, the biggest songwriter in that band. Or, I believe that Neil Peart, no, never mind. Um, you, you know, what's the thing? Um, Geddy Lee, he composed a lot of music, he plays bass, and he plays keyboards. He is a fucking dude. Hate, love or hate the guy. He is a fucking dude. Go fuck yourself. If so, you deny it. Without further ado, let's shine a light on some secret musical weapons, shall we? Don't let me down. Indeed. Uh, the police. Uh, oh yeah, fucking. Yeah, this is this is kind of a weird one, I believe. Oh no, no, it isn't. I, I thought that Watch Mojo was gonna pick Andy Summers, and he's like. Easily the most boring member of the band, but they're gonna pick Stuart Copeland. Love Stuart Copeland, he is a fucking dude. A rock on police. Number 10, Stuart Copeland, the police. I fucking love Stuart Copeland. Uh, oh, this is kind of this is kind of funny actually. That was Fandom's favorite song, and this is my favorite song probably from uh, Ghost in the Machine. 
How is this one called? Like, I forgot my favorite song from The Police, fucking hell. Uh, Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic. It's kind of a fuck all title. Well, uh, it's still kind of hard, I think. Uh, and they, well, speaking of Rush, they recorded this in the same studio as Rush. So, coincidence? I think not. ...within the circles of drum aficionados everywhere, and with good reason, as Copeland has long been considered to be one of the best to ever sit behind a kit. He's up there. Yes, he is. Everything, uh, every little... How the fuck is that song called? Um, yeah, every little thing she does is mad. I've, like, I kind of hate saying the title now, but every little thing she does is magic. It's such an amazing song. I love it. The melodies, the piano key at the beginning, the, the vocals by Sting, the drone by Stewart. It's just an amazing song. But Copeland manages to achieve an equally impactful status thanks to his hard hitting physical style and incredibly energetic stage presence. The drummer has even branched out of rock music into the world of film score composition, right. lending his creative talents to such films as Highlander 2 The Quickening. That sounds like a bad movie, but it might, it might be good. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Number nine. Number nine. The Pixies. Kim Deal. Pixies. Yeah, I believe that um, one of like you know the people around here. You know, the, uh, we were like a record shop, and uh, we were looking at well records. Obviously, you fucking know that. But um, she brought up the Pixies, and she was like, "Oh, we're going to see the Pixies," and I was like, "Good for you." Like, I, I don't hate the Pixies, I think they're a fine band, but like, Bonners fucking hate these guys, or The Bather, you know, that, that song. Um, yeah, the, the vocals are fucking terrible on that song, but the, the song itself sounds good though, but the vocals are really bad. But uh, I, I don't know, man, like, I'm gonna play it out for a bit, uh, probably still don't like the Pixies, but hey, at least I'll try it. Bass players sometimes get a bad rap, often hanging in the back of the stage, holding down the rhythm, and not getting super involved up front with the audience. No. That's kind of me in real life. Not so with like, I'm more busy with myself and not really paying attention to the crowd, you know, rather than the opposite. So there you go. Rock band Pixies, who not only enjoyed a rabid fan following, but also helped co-write some of the band's biggest hits and live favorites. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she does the backups. Yeah, I do, I do like her voice though. But I mean, Where's My Mind is like literally like the best song, and you know, um, I do like the haunting tone though. She has a really nice voice on Where's My Mind, but I don't, um, I do kind of think that the, the guitar sound sounds kind of shitty to be honest. Like, the, it sounds too thin and too. I don't know, the production on, on that guitar is like not doing it for me, or on the song itself, I don't fucking know. Is that a, yeah? You can you can track track guitars obviously. So produ producing guitars, I don't fucking I don't know what I'm talking about. Deal also stepped up within the Pixies on both co-lead and backing vocals, eschewing not only bass player stereotypes but also strengthening the role of women in rock. Not bad for someone who didn't even own a bass when she joined the band. Uh, gigantic. That just sounded like a generic punk song. I mean, um, if the Pixies are requested, I'm willing to review them. The Pixies sound eye to me. They're just kind of off for me. Like, they have some noise elements that I really dislike. And they don't, like, strike me that much as a great band. I do think they're kind of, like, they're really, like, acclaimed on the scene, though. And they did, like... They, they did spawn one of my favorite genres out there, subgenres grunge, I do love grunge. So, I do like the Pixies for that, but still, you know, the Pixies are, you know, I don't get them. They're, they're just kind of too noisy for me. So there you go. A band that I do get though. A band that I do get. Number 8, Cliff Burton, Metallica. Yeah, fuck yes. He, he is not with us anymore, but I mean, when he was in the band, he was for sure the secret weapon from for Metallica's Rega. 
He, he was Metallica's secret weapon, so there you go. I mean, another bass player. Yeah, I, I believe that's like the, the, the fucking... Uh, what's the thing? That, that's like the cliche of this list. Like, every band member is a bass player. That is like the secret weapon. Has not been diminished, despite the Metal Legends tragedy. Yeah, I mean, the, the girl from Pixies. Cliff Burton, I believe number 10 might might have been a fucking bass player. No, no, that was Stuart Colin, who was a drummer, so there you go. Like the bass player in The Police, that's the most popular member, so you can't do that. Burton was not a quiet bassist, preferring instead to amplify his sound with an approach which was both melodic... I mean, he is like a guitarist playing bass, he's like fucking insane. Wait. Cliff Burton is your secret uh, weapon band member, but you're showing a Jason Newsted clip. Like, what the fuck? Like, CL89 is the shit, but there's like no bass on it. Like, they fucking hate Jason. Um, and it was so fucking loud. I mean, come on now. But that's Jason Newsted. That's not Cliff Burton. Fuck off. That's Cliff Burton right there. Burton's work on such Metallica classics as Orion and For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yeah. And and the Steve and the pulling teeth. Outside the box create some of the best. Anything from the first three albums is fucking amazing. Musical moments. I mean, he is like shredding the bass up while he's doing the fucking uh, the devil sign or the, the fucking horns. Uh, I mean, fucking. Uh, Cliff is so fucking metal. Cliff and all. Awesome bassist. Uh, John and Whistle. I do think. I mean, Cliff is better. I think. Or is he? I mean, John and Whistle is an amazing bassist, though. I fucking love his style. I don't fucking know. I'm gonna let the clip play out. Number seven, John and Whistle. Listen to that bass tone, it's so good. As the third bassist on our list, and spoiler alert, there are more to come. Yep. John Entwistle attacked his chosen instrument with a dizzying ferocity throughout the 60s and 70s, earning fans and admirers a Like, way. he is so advanced and so, like, quick at, you know, in 65 or something. He's like a fucking prog metal bassist in the fucking 60s. He is so ridiculous, man. Like, who plays bass like that in 65? No one did. Sure, it may be tough to stand out when the who were so ahead of their time back in the day, they really were. And with hard rock heroes such as Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey... Pa Paners, how can you deny this musicianship? They're, well, he, he does think they're a great band. The musicianship in the who is amazing. He just doesn't like the music. Yeah, I mean, you're just missing out, man. They're just a great band, so... Moon, but Antwistle held his own, even branching out with his own group in later years playing such high profile shows as Woodstock 99. I love his like black fucking uh, sharp fucking guitar. I fucking love his bass. Songwriting and musical chops? John Entwistle It's such a cool guitar. Either one. It kind of looks like the guitar from Keith Richards, you know, the, his, his classic, his signature one. But you know, more spiky and shit or just more like Bent and shit, it has more forms, it just looks better. It looks even better to me, so there you go. The John and Whistle band, until he passed away. Yeah, amazing. Uh, speaking of amazing, who is the underrated member here? Um, Geezer Butler, right? The, the fucking drummer again, or the, the bassist again. I would almost say Bill Ward. He's a really amazing uh, drummer. I fucking love Bill Ward. Number six, Geezer Butler, Black Sabbath. Uh, I mean, I do kind of prefer um, Bill Ward. He's like my favorite Sabbath member because he just fucking tears it up, man. And I mean, he he went out of the band whenever the band, you know, just became weak. They became limp. But, you know, the, he ended on Heaven and Hell, which is a, a fucking high note to end on, though, Jesus Christ. But, you know, the, the Mob Rules was still a great album, though, but, you know, Heaven and Hell was definitely, like, the most appropriate album to go out on, you know, Heaven and Hell, Alive and Death and shit. 
There you go. Geezer Butler isn't your average bass player, approaching his instrument with the brass. The ends, you know, supposedly. Abilities of a lead guitarist. Yeah, I mean, he is an amazing bassist, though. Like everyone in Sabbath is a god tier artist. Uh, hi, Ozzy, how you doing, man? Bite, bite that rubber bat. Underrated Butler's star show. Oh my god, I mean, Ozzy is a dude. Ozzy, I would say Ozzy is still high tier, though. But like, Ozzy is easily the weakest member of the band for sure. Like he barely writes anything, and he he's he's kind of a dummy. So there you go. I love his voice on those early Sabbath records, but, but still, you know, fucking hell. Naomi made it possible for Butler to spread his creative wings as both songwriter and bassist, often playing against Naomi's riffs with memorable melodies of his own. <laughs> Add to this Butler's open mind for modern musical influences, and you have one seriously effective secret weapon. Yeah, Meg White. Meg White, the white. Meg White above uh, fucking Geezer Butler, no. Fell in love with a girl. I mean, I do have to say that their um, their style of like you know the red and white and shit, that that those iconic colors. They really made it the, their own colors in a way. So they, there you go. They have an iconic image though, but I don't care for the white stripes. I believe someone requested Elephant to me and I, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it at all. Ow, oh, fuck off Trent, fuck off. As their drummer. This holds quite a bit of water when it comes to the case of Meg White and the Those tits though, god damn. Musician's simplistic and regressive drum work is just what I have to look at something, sir. When it comes to her band straight ahead brand of rock and roll. Icky tongue. I want to make a really dirty joke right now, but let's not go there. It's icky or right? Yeah, it's icky or right. Jack White's garage rock ripping and direct <laughs> oh, I'm such a fucking dirty guy. to the drums. An approach which Meg was only too happy to provide. <coughs> to be honest, it probably I'm not hearing the specialty. I'm not hearing it at all. Meg's four on the floor style driving home white songwriting. She is too four on the floor for me. That's kind of it on the Blue Orchid. Party of special things to do. Blue Orchid is like my favorite White Stripe songs and Anthony is like, oh, Blue Orchid is not good. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I finally like a fucking White Stripe song and he's like, oh, that's not a good song. Dun, 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 You know, that, I do think that that sounds quite nice. Um, I do think that the tone is kind of shitty, but that name is awesome. Blue Orchid, great song title. And I do think that the, you know, the fucking, you know, the riff is good, but the tone is kind of shit, to be honest. So there you go. But, but I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying this right now. She's like, she's like fucking having, well, let's not go, let, let's not go now. I'm gonna throw a fucking trend out of the fucking window. He's destroying my fucking shop right now. Um, you know, I like Meg White. She's a fine girl, if you know what I mean. But, I mean, it's just fucking cymbal crashes over and over. It's just four on the fucking floor, basic ass, four chord, three chord fucking song songwriting. It's not anything special, to be honest. So, I, I don't get it. Uh, Izzy, yeah. Number four, Izzy Stradlin. The only good member of this shitty band. Roses. Number four, Izzy Stradlin. Guns and Roses. If you were to look at a selection of Guns N' Roses classics from the band's back catalog, it's highly likely that this secret weapon was responsible for some voice. of the songwriting. Yeah, um... Yeah, he wrote Patience, I've heard. 
Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna deny it. I'm, I'm, I'm like an old fan. <laughs> Patience. Uh, what else did he write? I think Dead Horse. That's probably why. That's like one of my favorite songs by them. But I fucking hate the vocals on that track. Uh, no, I was like living that let die, but that's, that's a fucking wing song, so I'm on them, so yeah. Is he Stradlin may not enjoy as big of a rock star status as Lee Man Slash, but Stradlin's talent is without No, but Stradlin is way fucking better. He bass himself way more and he did way less drugs than those fucking junkies did, so yeah, rock on uh, Izzy. Fucking I wanted to call him Lizzy. And more co-written the massive hits for Did Lizzy. Years. Yeah, that was a good song. 14 years. Yeah. I didn't name one other song, but I don't really care to be honest. The guitar player even took lead vocals on tracks like the memorable Dustin Bones. The memorable Dustin Bones is like one of the most generic songs of that album. Get the fuck out of here. That whole album is really bland in my opinion. Own with Izzy and the Juju and the only like you know praise someone at all is like November Rain and Koma is a, I can't deny Koma. Koma is a classic so there you go. Ways with guns. Shuffle it all. The Juju Hounds. Number three. Nah this band is really boring. Like guns offends me but at least they get a reaction out of me. His solo is still just fucking bullshit. Borst the piss out of me. Uh, what is this? Fucking, how is this called again? Um, how is this called? Uh, well, Alex Lyson, of course. Fucking up. How is this called again? How is this guy called again? You fucking degenerate swine. Alex Lyson, Rush. It's, it's, ah, uh, fuck. Ah. Uh. I was like fucking scratching my balls and trembles like taking me over. Like fucking hell. What do you do when you're in a power trio? Ah. Inside drummer Neil Pert and bassist Getty Lee. Oh. You speak if he comes here, I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. I think he just fucking castrated me. I'm not even sure. I'm kind of losing my voice, so maybe. Might be considered to be a secret weapon in a prog rock band, but for Lyson, it's. I wanted to say before Trent is gonna scratch my fucking balls again. Um, the thing is that you know it's so weird that Alex Lyson is like the fucking guitars, and you know he is the secret we weapon band member. That's such a bitch to say. And Geddy Lee, the bassist, and Neil Peart, Peer the drummer. Those are like the iconic figures of the band. While the guitars of the band is like the, the secret weapon. That, that's really fucking unique, you know. Only in Rush, you know. Only in Rush, um, the guitars is the underrated player. He's the secret weapon. So there you go. Careful balancing act between the guitar's frenetic fretwork, skills, <clears throat> and humble, unassuming personality. Dun, 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 dun. You can throw my fucking phone, guys. Fucking. Progressive rock relies on the sum of its parts, and it's Alex Lifeson's reliably impressive ratio in that equation which makes him a man's devastating secret weapon. On a time stand still. Yeah, this. Yeah. Ringo, my boy. Number Ringo two, Star. Ringo Star. The Beatles. Don't let me down. Oh, my hand fucking hurts. <laughs> I'm fucking bleeding. Don't let me down. Even if, like, you know, multiple limbs are uh, uh, severed off by me, I still gotta sing Beatles. I mean, come on. Man. Hello, goodbye. Goodbye, hello. Hello, goodbye. Ringo Starr has not only written and recorded plenty of LPs on his own, but the former Beatles' approach to drumming while performing alongside John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison was forward-thinking and bold for the time, embodying a progressive spirit which helped to craft numerous classics along the way. 
Like, it's kind of infamous that I freaked out on my stream with the song. But that's mainly because, you know, uh, it's just a long ass song that goes on forever. That, that's kind of an thing. Still classic though. Hey, hey, dude. I hate the people in the clip though. Like, there was literally like a fucking Barbie doll in that clip. Like, what the fuck was that? Nels Klein, Wilco. Wilco is the, the most boring band ever. Why, why, why is this band so acclaimed? Impossible Germany. Impossible to like this band. I, I gave them a, a 10 in the past though, so... What can I say? Rex Brown, Pantera. I mean, not really. Rex Brown literally does the same thing as Dimebag Daryl. He just follows Dimebag on guitar. So that's kind of bullshit to be honest. Chris Choir, yes. I thought I thought like Chris Choir is like the most popular member of Yes. Like what the fuck? Like that's the only guy I can name from Yes. So that's that's kind of like wait what? Isn't that uh, who the fuck is Chris Choir again? Is, isn't he the fucking bassist? He probably is the bassist. If you don't know it, he is the bassist because that's most likely gonna be on the list. Rick Allen, Def Leppard. Look, just because a guy, you know, has one arm and he can drum doesn't mean he's a secret weapon band member. He stands out, sure, but it doesn't work like that much, Mojo, not at all. Like, you know, the, the lack of a feature is not a positive, like, like let it be clear. Adrian Smith, Iron Maiden. I do, I do think, yeah, I do prefer Adri Adrian Smith over um, Dave Murray because I think that Adrian Smith really, like, you know, gives Iron Maiden the, the, the metal edge, whereas Dave Murray kind of makes it more blues and a bit more conventional, a bit more catchy in a way. Uh, but at the end of the day, I want to fucking rock out to Maiden, so there you go. John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. He is an amazing artist though. Love, love fucking um, <coughs> John Paul Jones. Number one, John Paul Jones, Led Zeppelin. Oh. What can we say about John Paul Jones? Standing just out of the limelight, Jones was a songwriter, keyboardist, and bass player extraordinaire, anchoring Led Zeppelin during his tenure with the Hard Rockers. Dun, 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 dun. Jones didn't stop there, however, dun, dun. and continued to be creative long after Led Zeppelin. Lenny Kravitz. Today, collaborating with artists as varied as Lenny Kravitz. Yeah. I gonna go my way. They're so ridiculous on stage. Like what the fuck? Skodos Eam. Then John Stewart show. Jones formed the rock supergroup, then Crooked Vultures. Remaining relevant for over four decades, that's what we call the sign of a true musical secret weapon. New Fang. That's a cool title, though. So, do you agree with our list? I mean, John Paul Jones is like such an amazing artist in Led Zeppelin. He can compose, he plays fucking keyboards, he plays bass, um, he's just a gorgeous man. He is just an awesome human being. I love John Paul Jones. He's amazing. He's like, well, he's basically John Entwistle, but he does more in the band, I suppose. That's kind of it, honestly. He's like an upgraded John Entwistle. And granted, John Entwistle already is a god tier fucking bassist. So, what may, what does that John, what may, how the fuck am I gonna say this? What does that make John Paul Jones a fucking? Triple S tier, I suppose. Do whatever you want. For more heavy top ten lists published every And then there's the watch watch. The fuck is this? Now they're just pulling strings out of their fucking ass. I mean come on now. Uh, Jack Watch you can do better than this, man. Come on. But that's the review, or review, that's the, the video, I hope you've enjoyed it, I, yeah, I do, do have some time for some comments, but not really feeling them to be honest, but whatever.
Cliff Burton shows a clip of Jason News that exactly fucking all. First thing I thought of, shame, exactly. So I ran this list overall, but the fact they showed Jason clips instead of Cliffs says everything. Also, Mac White. How can you be a secret weapon when you ha are literally half of the band? Exactly. Exactly. Now, the fucking White Stripes are fucking bullshit. Like, like the band is good, but it's, it's kind of like, why are they on the list? It's kind of bullshit, to be honest. So there you go. Where the fuck, where is John Deegan? Uh, John, yeah, John Deacon is a pretty underrated member of the band, I would say. I would give the edge to Roger Taylor. I think that Roger Taylor is way better, but John, John Deacon is the weakest member of the band, but he's still great, I think. A band is only as good as, as a drummer. Really, I think Metallica is pretty good. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like, wait. Um, yeah, the bass is right, but they were mentioning Lars Ulrich. <laughs> I fucking love that comment. <laughs> Warning, this video will trigger you if you're a Metallica fan. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. John Paul Jones, one of the greatest musicians of all time. Yes, he is. Picking anyone from Rush, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath is a waste of time. Everyone in those bands are secret weapons. Yeah, exactly. Awesome comment. I mean, these comments are pretty fresh right now. I, I, I do really dig these comments. Dude, what a big mistake showing Jason and I like Jason, but Jesus, dude. Yeah, exactly. I, I like Jason too, but I love Cliff. That's kind of the difference right there. Uh, by the way, um, I'm probably going to end it there. I mean, these comments are pretty fire, though, but I have no time anymore. But um, fucking, um, if you want to check out something, you know, Jason related and you think he can do better than on Metallica because, you know, and just as fraud. It's a great album, but... There's no bass on that album, on the black album, he already sold out, so, you know, not really. But, um, if you want to hear some awesome, like, bass lyrics by Jason Newstead on, on actual trash records, listen to Flot Flotsam and Jetsam. Awesome fucking trash band, love those guys. So, that's the list, uh, now, uh, hope you've enjoyed it, like, and subscribe to the channel for future lights, man. Let me know what you want to see in an upcoming video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.